Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here. And continuing the discussion from the previous video where we took this example. Now have a look. This is not showing us the relationship between the input and output directly. You cannot see what is the... This is a relationship between the input and output, but we do not have an explicit representation. This is an implicit as we had previously. The output on one side, the input on the other side, the clear, we had a clear picture. Fine. So to find that clear picture, we need to, what did I tell you in the previous video? We need to solve this equation. This is representing a system, of course. Of course, this is representing a system such that you have an input x of t given to it. To that system that is described by this particular input and it's giving you an output y of t. Fine. So now, let's say we, we solve it. And you know what would be the solution? y of t would be what? It would be the sum of y particular of t plus the y homogeneous of t. Particular would be for a particular input and let's say that particular input is given to us x of t is given k times exponential of 3t. Fine. Now if this x of t is given, now what do you have? And, 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 and it's also you have u of t with it. Fine. Now this input is given. Now what do you have? So based on this input, based on this input, I assume, I do what? I do an assumption over here that if this is the input, so the output would be 1. And now this output is for a particular value of input, so I name it as y p of t. Fine. So let's say, let's say this is equal to some constant time. That is a capital Y times, again, an exponential function. And you could write a u of t. You could write for t greater than 0. So I've written u of t here. I write t of zero, t greater than 0 there to let you know that this is the one and the same thing. So let's say this is the solution to this equation. So now if this is the solution to the equation, it must satisfy the equation. Let me name this equation as A. So what do you have over here? A implies what? The uh, derivative of y of t, so this would be 3 times uh, y of exponential of 3t and then plus 2 times y of exponential of 3t and this would equal x of t which is k times exponential of 3t and we are dealing with everything this is t greater than 0 for t less than 0 the input is 0 the output is 0 fine so exponential of 3t has cancelled out right or do you want me to do it okay exponential of 3t is gone and this implies what this implies that 5y is equal to k or y is equal to the capital Y is equal to k upon 5. Isn't this like this? Y would be equal to k upon 5 and this would now imply my particular solution. I would come to know that my y particular solution is k by 5 exponential of 3t and this is again of course 4t greater than 0 so this is let's say u of t. So I have found my particular solution to the equation. We will be completing it, but wait. Is that clear till here? Yes. Now, now the homogeneous solution. So the homogeneous solution is what? Homogeneous solution is the equation input is, is supposed to be zero. So if y h of t is equal to unknown, so what do you do for that case? You take the, 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 the given equation, that is the derivative of y of t plus two times y of t and you equate it to zero. Fine. Again, I am assuming, again I am assuming that let's say in this case, I have another output, assume y homogeneous of t, this is again some sort of an exponential which is a times exponential of st, a times exponential of st. So now again, if this is a solution to this equation, now I wrote an h over here because it's solution to the homogeneous equation. So if I have this solution, so this must satisfy this equation and let's say this is b. So my b implies what? <coughs> oh, sorry. 
my b implies what the derivative of this so s a exponential of s t s a exponential of s t plus 2 times this thing so 2 times a exponential of s t and this is equal to 0 fine now what do you have I can take common a s a exponential a and the exponential term uh, I could take common and then I could have an s plus 2 equal to 0 so now uh, you can, if this is equal to 0 so either a is equal to 0 or s plus 2 is equal to 0 and a cannot be equal to 0 because this is the constant in the given term and this cannot be equal to 0 because if this comes 0 the m output would be 0 then we would not have any condition to continue our discussion so we mean s plus 2 is 0 and, and the value of s would come out to be negative 2 and this would imply that I have my my what my homogeneous solution that the homogeneous solution y h of t would be a times exponential of negative 2 t and this is my homogeneous solution is that final here now uh, we have found out the particular solution we found the homogeneous solution which means that the complete solution is what the complete solution the complete we have found out the complete solution and that is y of t this is equal to particular is k by 5 exponential of 3t and then plus an a times exponential of negative 2t and this is for t greater than 0 for t less than 0 the output is 0 so this is my final solution but this is still not my final solution why is that because I have an unknown constant k is not an unknown constant because k was given in the question as k so I don't have anything to do with it in the question you would be given two times exponential of 3t you would be given the value of k right so k is not my unknown the unknown that I need is this a because this I introduced myself I introduced myself two variables that was s and that was a the value of s I found the value of a still remain right so now what do you have over here I introduced y and I found out the value of y so only a remain now for finding a what do we need we need that extra information now come the time for the extra information and the extra information is from the auxiliary condition and the auxiliary condition in our case is the condition of initial rest and have a look we were talking about everything for t greater than 0 so we say that y of t is x of t is equal to 0 for t less than 0 so y of t would be 0 for t, great, for t less than 0 as well right if and so fine so we would use this as our condition of initial rest at t is equal to 0 also right at t is equal to 0 so I'm choosing my auxiliary condition at t is equal to 0 implies what x of t is equal to 0 so the condition of initial rest implies that y of t is also equal to 0 so I would put everything over here fine and let me name this another equation let's say c so c implies what c implies that the output y of t is 0 this is equal to k upon 5 exponential of 0 would be 1 and plus again a times exponential of 0 so this would be 1 this would be 1 right so a would come out to be negative k upon 5 a, and, and let me check negative k upon 5 yes this is it so you would put it in your y of t you put this in your y of t right 
So if this is negative k upon 5, so then you would have k upon 5 as common. You have an exponential of 3t minus exponential of 2t. Right? So let me write the final equation. So this implies what? That my final solution y of t, this would equal what? This would be k upon 5. This would be k upon 5. They are common. Right? So k upon 5 is common. Exponential of 3t. Right? Minus you had minus so minus exponential of negative 2t and what did you have you had it for t greater than it's for t greater than 0 right for t less than 0 the output was 0 so let me write a u of t with it and this is for all values of time and this is my final solution now i believe i've taken some time in this video but the problem is that i don't know how to solve these equations if you know how to solve them, so that is good enough for you. I won't be taking more examples because I don't know how to deal with them. You solve more equations by yourself. Now have a look, I was telling you that over here we could not say what is the input, what is the output. Over here we could say what is the input, what is the output. You give it a value of t, you give it, you get an output. You give it a value of t, you get an output. You give an input, you give an output. You know what the input is, you know what the output is over here, you did not know it like that. You did not have the clear picture. Well, if k, of course, would be given. That's some cost. You take it some value. Now you have what? You have a clear picture. How is the output dependent on the input? The out, the independent on one side, dependent on the other side. Over here, we did not have a clear picture. That is it. That is it. That's it for this video. <coughs> <coughs> what do you have? This we also have one more point. This that I talked about I, uh, I was what? Was a first order differential equation. This that I talked about was a first order differential equation. But it is not necessarily, it's not necessary that we have first order, okay? You know what an order is. This is a first order differential equation. And what is an order? Order is the highest derivative in the in the what? In the equation. Highest number of derivative. In the differential equation represents the order. Which means if we have a second derivative involved, that would be a second order equation. If we have a third derivative involved, that would be a third order equation. So an nth order uh, uh, collinear constant coefficient differential equation is what? nth order equation is something of the form like this. Let me write summation n running from 0 to infinity a k, right? Uh, and, and 0 to n k running from 0 to n yes k running from 0 to n a k and let me take this notebook with me the k derivative of what the k derivative of y of t and this is equal to summation k uh, running from 0 to m in this case you have bk and the derivative of the inputs the k derivative of the input x of t where a and b are constants of course so this is an nth order linear constant coefficient differential equation used to describe what used to describe causal LTI systems and this is what this is an implicit representation and how to get the explicit out of it so I told you in the previous video the steps of it now the auxiliary condition for an other nth order linear constant equation now this was the first order differential equation we had one constant so we needed one auxiliary condition if you have a second order equation, you would have two constants and you would need two auxiliary conditions. If you have a third order equation, 
you would need three conditions. So this implies what? That if you have the nth order equation, you would need what? You would need n number of equations, n number of auxiliary conditions. Nth order, uh, nth order equation implies what? You need n number of auxiliary conditions and this is an important point. This is a very important point, okay? And the order equation implies what? You would need n number of auxiliary conditions. And what are those conditions? Uh, so, so let me write it with the black pen and let me have some space for it so that we don't mix things up over here. Okay? Now what do you have? Previously we talked about that if x of t naught is 0, this implies that y of t naught is 0. This is the first condition or this was the first order equation we wrote over here that when t was 0, x of t was 0, y of t was 0. So this was the first condition. First condition, right? Now what can you have other possibilities? The other possibilities that you can have are if x of t is 0 implying y of t is 0, if y of t naught is 0, this means that the derivative of y of t naught would be 0. If the derivative, the first derivative of y of t naught is 0, this means the second derivative of y of t naught would be 0. And similarly the third and similarly the fourth and hence you go on and on. The basic thing depends on the first condition, depends on the value of t naught. Now if I generalize it, if I generalize it, so what do you have? If I generalize it, generalizing, so this implies what? This implies that if I was given a y of t naught, y of t naught was 0, this would equal the first derivative at y of t naught, this would equal the second derivative at y of t naught, and similarly the third. And it goes on and on till what? If this is an nth order equation, so it would go to n minus 1, right? So the n minus 1 derivative, n minus 1 derivative of y of t naught and all of these are equal to 0. So this is another important condition that we have derived. The first thing that we saw was a first order differential equation, one number of constants. The next thing is nth order condition, a higher order, okay, second order, third order, fourth order. This is the representation. You have any order of equation, you would have that number of auxiliary conditions. And what were those auxiliary conditions? For the first, you took t naught, y of t naught would be 0 if x of t naught is 0 by using the condition of initial rest. So t naught has a value. T naught has some significance, okay? So if x of t naught is 0, y of t naught would be 0, that was the first condition. Now if y of t naught is 0, the first derivative would be 0, the second would be 0, the third, the n minus 1 derivative would be 0, and that is how you use it. Now if you are at the first level 1, first order condition, so y of t naught is 0, two, two order, second order equation, derivative, till here you take these two conditions, now third order you take these three, for fourth order you take these four, for fifth order you have four conditions, for five or and for fifth order, Till, till 4, okay, total of 5, including y of t naught, that is why, now if you, you are including y of t naught, that is why we have n minus 1, okay, so that is all, I am a little tired, that is all for today, that's all about uh, LTI system described by linear constant coefficient differential equations, 
In the next video, we see the discrete time where we would be dealing different equations. Till then, take care of yourselves and everyone around you. And do remember me in your prayers and do subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. Goodbye.